Thanks for staying with us. Alternative Investments is a label for disparate group of investments that are distinguished from long-only publicly traded investments in stocks, bonds, and cash, often referred to as traditional investments. The terms traditional and alternative should not imply that alternatives are necessarily uncommon or that they are relatively recent additions to the investment universe. Alternative investments include such assets as real estate and commodities, which are arguably two of the oldest types of investments. Alternative investments also include non-traditional approaches to investing within special vehicles such as private equity funds and hedge funds. These funds may give the manager flexibility to use derivatives and leverage to make investments in liquid assets and to take short positions. Today we'll be exploring alternative investment opportunities in Nigeria. Please let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation, send us an SMS or WhatsApp 2081803846636. You could also tweet at us at WayShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WayShow. The beautiful part about tonight is that we're not just talking off the top of our heads. We have a guest, like I said, who is an expert on the subject matter in the studio with us today. But then ladies, let me hear from you first. Please, what do you know about investments? Let me start. Let me not go to authentic investment first. Let's start from traditional investments. Jennifer, Jennifer what do you know? <laughs> <laughs> what do you know about investments? Jennifer, Jennifer, let's hear from you. Funny enough, it's not true. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, ladies. Good evening. 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 I don't like to keep money in the bank because yeah. it's not doing anything for me. That it's just oh, lying there, no matter. Yeah. yeah. So I like to put my money in things, and I know before I've always just saved money mm -hmm. until I started to learn that you can actually invest your money, long-term investment, short-term investment, and I've done a couple of investments. Some of them good investments, some of them weren't so good. Mm -hmm. But I know currently I've, I'm currently investing in stocks. Mm. Um, I have um, investment in real estate. Mm. I also have some in agriculture. Mm. So it just depends. So I just try to like spread it, spread it across. Um, so they are mostly long-term investment, investment for me. They're not things that, the short-term ones that I do are very risky. Mm. So those ones, I keep it to myself. So in case Casala <laughs> boss, Anything happens. only me, I'll be the only person to. I think too. I'm in the same boat. So look your I was actually... <laughs> Uh -huh. I don't even know the right words to use. So there's this particular, I'm not going to call the name, but it was um, Agrotech, right, that I invested in. And man, hey, God, see, anytime I remember that thing, eh, the thing, it hurts me so mm. bad because the person that actually put me on it was very credible. And I, I know he had had, like, turnover from it and all of that. So when he told me, I'm like, okay, great, let's do this. And to be honest, to be honest, I actually got some returns from it. But you know how these things work now. It got to I'm like, okay, now give me back my cap until today. Do you know the funny thing is we're still getting emails to say that, oh, sorry, guys, we're still working on. And I'm like, are you guys joking? What it's almost two months? years now. Wow. Like, it's let's just same, move on. It happen, it, that same thing happened to me. And in fact, to me and my sister, my one of my uncles, my mom's brothers came back from... You know, they are broad. Where can I invest? Can mm. you go? I say, first of all, me, I'm not the right person. <laughs> Unfortunately for him, mm. the investment I was doing at the time is similar to what you're talking about. And <laughs> he put his money today, two days later, the thing scattered. Oh. I had to pay him back. Oh, wow. No. Yeah, somehow. You know those guilt trips? Yeah. But yeah I, had to, I had to pay him back because, I mean, he came because of me. So <gasps> I know a lot of people need this knowledge, mm. and um, I'm one of them. You see, so. do, you know any, do you know anything about investments in Nigeria? Or even I globally? Have vague, I have a vague idea about um, investment in Nigeria. I have a lot of interest in uh, mutual funds, mm. basically. So I like to play safe. I don't go to I don't go through the um, risky route, and I don't believe in Ponzi schemes. So if you come with a Ponzi scheme, I think that's probably what must have happened to um, yeah. yes mm -hmm. to you, Alera. Mm -hmm. So I believe in Ponzi schemes. When you come with that, I don't listen to it. But however, I think that yes, this is something that we all need. And um, my my first question is really going to be on how to talk about it from the tech um, point of view, basically. Okay, so Muiwa Olowokoroko is the head partnerships, alliances, and events at Art Splits, an innovative platform which gives you the opportunity to co-own fractions of rare and valuable artworks and music. 
In return, you can sell these fractions or splits and earn from it. He has been privileged to design and execute several brand strategies for leading local and international brands, some of which include InterSwitch, Coca-Cola, Total Nigeria PLC, Monster Energy, GSK, NBC, Abin Berg, Kraft Heinz, Royal Air Maroc, Morocco's Kingdom Official Airline, amongst many others. Thank you for joining us in the studio live today, Mr. Mwingwa. Thank Mwingwar. you. My pleasure. <laughs> Welcome. You're very welcome, and we can we have a lot of questions to ask you. So we hope that you. And I'm excited that I'm, I'm I'm excited that I'm the one sitting closer <laughs> to him. So, My welcome, party. welcome. Yeah. Okay. So first things first, let's go into the discussion. Can you just walk us through what investment is like in Nigeria? Well, um, you had rightly summarized, mm. you know, the entire landscape, you know, um, investment landscape in Nigeria, you know. So when you talk about investment in Nigeria, what comes to your mind is stocks, bonds, mm -hmm. you know, and stuff. And then until recently, when people are now in the IP, you know, real estate, mm -hmm. and then uh, and I also talked about agriculture and stuff. So people have actually, you know, that's been the way the landscape has been. And we've also seen that some of these financial instruments over time had failed in terms of, you know, it was brought a uh, global meltdown. Usually that affects them, you know, considerably. So we've had instances where people, we had time people like committed suicide because they lost huge money, you know, in stocks and the likes. And of course, are the things that happen to you, you know, because you are um, susceptible to all those kind of, you know, yeah, economic yeah. forces and stuff mm -hmm. that will happen. So um, as it seems actually globally, same it is in Nigeria. Because some of these financial instruments, talking about bonds and stocks and stuff, usually would fail. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, in terms of um, returns on some of these investments, it's been good over the years, right? It's been, you have two digits sometimes in some cases. Mm -hmm. You have something, some, sometimes like below 10%, above 10%, then sometimes it also declines and stuff like that. So there have been, the market forces already determine how these things go. And many people would not understand the fact that some of them are long, some of these investments are actually long term, mid term mm -hmm. to long term. Many people in Nigeria, which also makes Ponzi scheme to actually affect Nigerians, mm -hmm. because people are looking for like something in the quick immediate. Quick, yeah. They want like a quick turnaround because all these, you know, get rich quick kind of syndrome will affect people. Mm -hmm. So people don't actually understand the concept of investment. Mm -hmm. Those who understand it have profited from it over the years mm -hmm. because they understand the fact that in one year there might be a down sound sometime, like in that two years, this might actually spike. So you have a particular uh, company that stock sells for, like say three naira per unit of shares. Then um, after like five years, you see like ten naira. Then at the point it just drops, mm. it goes like two naira. Mm -hmm. People like have lost money, and people understand this concept. You understand the fact that you need to wait like five, ten, twenty years. Some even invest not for themselves but for mm -hmm. their children. Right. So, unfortunately, the generation <laughs> that we currently have, we believe that once you invest, like another one month, it's you actually become something. So, which makes Ponzi scheme to actually thrive. Yeah. So, that actually diluted the concept of investment yeah, yeah. in Nigeria, mm -hmm. and, and so I mean that affects a lot, you know, when it comes to um, investment. But generally, the landscape has been the way it's always been across the globe. But Nigerians just need to understand <laughs> that it's a different ball game when it comes to investment. Mm -hmm. So I mean that's just been the, the dynamics and the story mm -hmm. over time. But the instruments remain the same, anyways. Right. Hmm. So talking about um, exploring um, alternative investment opportunities right now, um, even in Nigeria or globally, what are those um, kinds of investment that we can get into? I mean, a lot of us are you know, making money here and there. We don't want to leave our money line fallow. I mean, you've talked about bonds, you've talked about stocks. Are there other forms of um, investment, things that we can track? Um, I know that sometimes, I mean, if you talk about stocks, if you want to um, track stocks, you need to be up to date with what is happening in the news, what is happening in these industries. So if Apple, for example, is losing uh, maybe today in the economic standards, it means that whatever stocks you have with Apple will be dropping. Whatever stocks you have with Microsoft or Google will definitely drop. And um, you also need to understand how the market works. So for people who don't necessarily have the time to um, keep up to date with those information, what kind of alternative um, investment opportunities do you think are out there? Or would you suggest or advise? Okay, so I think that would give you an opportunity to talk briefly about my business, yeah, yeah. Uh, the business that I represent. Um, so what we've over, uh, observed over time is during the global meltdown and all the different economic crises that happened across the world, we found that there's a particular asset class yeah. that seemed not to be affected yeah. by all these you know, forces. 
and that, that is art. It's talking about visual arts and you know, other forms of art. Um, prior to now, people believe that this is the exclusive reserve of the rich mm. and wealthy because of course, those are the ones who have the yeah. means to collect yeah. artworks worth 10,000, 20,000 to millions of dollars mm. and keep it as more store value for them. Now, so what we have seen over the years is that as a class, has been consistent over the years and the growth has been really you know significant and that can actually be tracked. So we felt like as a business that I mean coming from a group of investors and investment company, so we felt like it is important to begin to open the eyes of Nigerians yeah. to this alternative investment platform or solutions. So we started with arts and the company called Aspre. So we started with art and uh, what we have done successfully is to make access possible to people who are in the lower rung of the ladder who the, an everyday person to begin to invest in this asset class that prior to now we thought like is reserved to the mm -hmm. you know for the rich. So um, I'll give you an instance. So an artwork for instance that's that was done by Lady Benamo would cost a average on hundred thousand US dollars. Now a single person cannot possibly do that. Mm -hmm. So what we have done as a business is to look at the concept of co ownership mm -hmm. in investment. So don't call it crowdfunding. Mm. We look at co-ownership because I will explain okay. how that differs. Now, what that co-ownership does is this artwork costs a hundred thousand dollars. We as a business, you know, will drive, will convert to a hundred thousand. We'll break it hundred thousand. So the value hundred thousand dollars will divide it into hundred thousand units. So that's like for as low as a dollar. Instead of you entering the investment at hundred thousand dollars, you enter the investment with a dollar. Okay. Right. So the more you can buy, the better for you. Now, what happens is immediately you buy those, we call them splits. Mm -hmm. that's, why, that's where the name of splits come from, right? So we call them 100,000 splits, uh, which as well as a dollar, some even 20 cents. You develop that of the story, 20,000 dollars, 20 cents per split, right? You buy the split, you bid for it anyways. It's mm -hmm. not like you okay, can just, just buy slightly because outright, you have to be competing. Okay. There are a lot of people who want to buy part of, of this thing. So save like, sometimes you have 500 people bidding for a particular artwork. Mm -hmm. So it begins to drive the value of the assets. You is investing with 20 cents. If you are not careful, Somebody who has bidded with 22 cents will bid you and buy more for them and you will lose out of the opportunity. Mm. So what we do is that you allow you to bid and you determine the market, the market, the low price for that particular asset. So by the time you all of you pull your funds into it, you invest, you buy splits. The question now is, this is a physical artwork. Who is going to keep a physical customer yeah, of that yeah, asset? Exactly. Right? So what we now do is we introduce another solution called the lease concept. The lease concept is where somebody will bid to own that work for a period of time. Now, that is to create immediate return on investment for the investors. Mm. I don't, I don't mm -hmm. get to make, uh, make sense what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. So, um, people bid for that lease auction, and then the winner, the, the highest bidder takes the work. The proceed from that lease auction is going to be shared amongst everyone who has invested in that asset during the split auction. So, that is immediate return on investment. Now, you can you hold that asset with you for a period of time and watch the market forces determine the value of the artwork. It begins to appreciate the market because people are trading more like you look at stock trading people are now in secondary markets are putting extra margin on their investment are selling it off the minute that is happening it's automatic configuring the new price for that asset now in another five years or say one year or two years or three years as the case may be you want to keep yourself for a long time the value of that will begin to appreciate in the market now if you want to exit your investments you exit it and have your returns but one thing we have done successfully is that even that list that i mentioned earlier it goes out every two years. So that means every two years you are getting dividends on your investments. Mm -hmm. It goes into your portfolio, increase your portfolio balance. And then the act talk itself is appreciated in the secondary market. All right? So that way we have, we have opened up the opportunity to people to invest in what the, the so-called elite and the rich would usually invest in that we never knew about. So that's one of the solutions we have brought to four. And we are about a year now, we have a year now, and I can tell you that from what we have done so far, there have been well over 1.5 million in terms of transaction happening within the, the platform. Yeah, dollars. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, actually, the app is even starting with dollars. And the reason is, of course, to ensure that we help people to edge their um, investments against Naira so that, I mean, you actually control the fluctuation. That is one of the investment opportunities. I wonder what I also saw was the music. If you notice, Afrobeat has become adopted across the world. Mm -hmm. So you'll see people want to collaborate with Thames, with David Doe, with Whiskey and stuff. And people who understand the landscape are making huge money from these artists across the world because they are subscribing to streaming platforms, mm -hmm. right? As of today, 
what we have as data is that there are over 368 million people who are subscribed to all these streaming platforms called Spotify, Apple, uh, Amazon and the like, right? People are streaming music and artists is earning money from those streaming. So the artist is just keeping the money and you're just vibing to the guy's music and the mm. guy's making money and you're just there and you're spending your money. Can't you just make extra money from these guys? So we that's another thing we also discovered and we call the music space on the aspect. So what that does is that a project is coming out from an artist, the artist will require some funds to do that, right? Yeah. And so what we do is pull in funds, all of you come and buy split into the come and invest in the album of this artist before it is released. Now, once the investors put in their funds, and the album is released every month when the artist is any royalties percentage that they own of that particular album is being paid into their wallet month on month that is a month on month earning on your investment and you can still keep your primary asset because you have bought units of that particular album so you keep it in perpetuity so if you keep it for like 50 years even when you are no more your children keep any from that um, music catalog. So these are the opportunity investment opportunities that we, you know, is available to Nigerians now yeah. and, we'll be, and Africans that we actually can actually. Yeah, I'm glad that you touched on that because I was actually going to ask how people like invest in music. I mean, if you are not maybe sponsoring the artists yeah, or you know yeah. something like that. Yeah. But yeah, um, I will come to you, Alera mm -hmm. and EC as well. I'm sure you have questions to ask. But then let's take a short break. Mm -hmm. See you after the break. If you're just tuned in, we're exploring alternative investment opportunities in Nigeria with Muiwa. Please let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation, send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081 You could also tweet at us at Wisho Africa with the hashtag Wisho. So, Alero, yeah. Um, so, the question that I have for Muiwa is what are the parameters that a new and skeptical Invest. investor? What are the parameters that you think people like us should look out for when we want to make an investment um, decision? So when making investment decisions, you need to look at one, what is actually the antecedents of you know, um, players in that field. Mm -hmm. You need to look at um, two, um, you need to go into researching to understand how the particular asset class that you are going to invest in mm -hmm. actually matters. So for instance, if you look at, um, let me give you an instance in music for instance. Um, Realities have been delivering well about um, 13.8 billion US dollars mm -hmm. in the last one year. It's projected that by the end of 2023, it should be about 16 point something billion. By the end of 2027, it's going to deliver about 18 point something billion US dollars. Right? So that is across the globe. But if you bring it to Africa, it's still running in its hundreds because, mm -hmm. of course, the nature of stuff. So you begin to look at the trends, right? And one of the key things I was just say about music is the fact that music realities have the capacity of delivering two digits for you in all honesty because it is not subjected, it's not independent, so it's dependent of public markets. Mm -hmm. So the normal economic forces that determine buy and sell and trading mm -hmm. doesn't actually okay. affect music, that class. Yeah. Right. And then thank God for technology. Right. So it has actually blown it up and then it makes it easy for anyone to invest. So, so there's there's a place that you can look at it. Exactly. So the dashboards we can actually go and okay. study how what is being paid as realities to artists? Mm -hmm. You know when they stream particular numbers. You know what's going to come in to investors. So that it has, every option is there. The same thing for art. In the last sixteen years, it's been consistent around sixteen billion to sixty-eight billion US dollars mm -hmm. in terms of you know the value of art in the market space. So it keeps growing steady. And of course, there's always almost CGR growth of about say. Two point something percent, okay. six percent, and it grows. So, these are the things that you need to begin to look at when you're looking at. So, you need to actually take your time to study the industry right, and the asset class. I'm, I'm really excited class. to hear that at least the customer can see a projection. Yes. Because, I mean, I would want to have an idea of yes. how is it going. Yes. And I think another thing, again, is that focusing on the trend also helps because um, you have to know what's happening in the economy, what is, okay. you know, how is it being affected, just to know. Yeah, thank you. Okay. All right, you see. Hi, hi. Okay, my question is, you know, is related to your interest and your passion, basically, because your interest and your passion is um, to 
is to create an alternative or ensure that there is alternative investment opportunities for every African, basically. So let's look at it from a holistic point of view. How can a tech-savvy individual or a non-tech-savvy individual actually synergize to create or explore alternative um, investments, opportunities? Okay, so for tech-savvy individuals, for instance, I will just readily mention that there are several um, there are several concepts that can be, you know, articulated that, that can actually you can leverage technology to deliver. So I will mention, like, I mentioned some about co-ownership, and I think it's important that anyone who is a tech savvy person will look at. So what is that thing that can, we can commoditize and they can use technologies to actually drive? So once you're able to identify anything of such nature, it could be even real estate. So imagine uh, we have people who would um, say, I want a piece of land in Banana Island, for instance. Mm -hmm. I know that ordinarily I would never be able to afford afford it. I'm not saying I mean considering my financial state at the moment, right, no. I'm just saying an average person. Then what you now do is okay, you know what? What can how can I use technology in this case, maybe an app, it could even be a web app or something. So let me create something that allows several of us to actually co own these assets, then watch it grow over time and then we trade it. So that's something that can be made possible for a tech savvy person because in this case you understand the concept of technology. You can use that one to drive it. Now for an average person who is not even tech savvy what the person would depend on more largely is, I mean, I don't want to talk, talk about crowdfunding or stuff like that, but people like that would look like, okay, so who and X, Y, Z can I put together to put these funds and then do this? And we know we are going to keep it as store of value for us and over time we we'll trade it. And that way is an investment for them. So it's, it's a function of looking around you. So, I mean, looking at opportunity around you, looking at concepts that you can commoditize and they can use technology to actually leverage to drive, I mean, the market force to also drive um, the value and also um, other ones put it this way, more like driving value. This is a project like what kind of what kind what are the basic things because the, the the principle is the same all over the world, whatever it is they're doing. What matters is what the edge you can actually add to it, what solution can you add to it to actually grow it up and make it accessible to actually invest in. So that's really what I was going to say to you in response to that. I hope I answered your question. <laughs> okay, so you see, you're going to say something. Okay, sure. Okay, okay. Sure. No, okay. 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 Now, let's look at it from the other point now. So, let's say I have um, a, I have, I'm an artist, for example, be it music or um, physical artwork, and I want to put out my artwork for people to invest in. Do I get money from that? How does that, how does that work? So, um, for artists, for instance, who want to get money from his work, mm -hmm. right, or want people to invest, invest in his yeah. work, there are different ways to go about it. There are different businesses or different platforms that do that, do quite a few anyways. Mm -hmm. But I think, and I, re I referred to a business earlier, uh, such businesses allow you to put your work up for, for splits, you know, for you can actually buy into it. So you can actually use such technology platform to drive you know, the sale of your assets. And you can go to auction houses. Mm. Right, so you put your work there because I mean, you maybe you did the work 20 years ago. I, I have an instance of an artist who had come to say, oh, this work was done in 1983. Mm. I said, I want to actually put it off because I need money. And for that artist, it's an investment because he had done that work like over 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. And then he brings it up and goes into an auction platform. People auction for the work, mm -hmm. they buy into it, it makes his money. So that kind of work will price, depending on what the artist has been doing in auction over the years, the work can price between $8,000 and $20,000. And maybe the artist is late and the estate of the artist wants to trade it. You're talking about hundreds of thousands because they. I mean, because the works are not, are not scarce, they're mm -hmm. not available to, you know, the, the man cannot recreate those works, okay. so they are not scarce, so the person actually goes and then sell. So those are the ways, of course, they will make money because it's an investment that has been, you know, kept, you know, for years, so. If, if, I may, if I may step in, if I may step in, what about, you know, we have very rich culture and tradition. The versatility of our culture and tradition is vast. So how can we leverage on this to explore other um, avenues for investment. Okay, so you have mentioned our cultural heritage and stuff. So we are looking at instances talking about collectibles, memorabilia in this case, like cultural collectibles. You are looking at old coins that you know people would die to have, right? Yeah, so yeah. these are some of the things that we can actually also put as investment class. Like I said, always to just look around and say what exactly can we even turn into an asset and make money of. So 
talking about our ex our cultural um, uh, values and our current exchange, for instance, and which is one of the things that we're talking about, even tourism could actually be one of the things that we you know, see as an investment. Mm -hmm. Because you have sites, you have stuff that can and convert into so many things that can yield profit for people over the years. Because investment in tourism, you have several cultural sites and stuff that you can actually invest their money in and then bring in tourism in exchange for all of these things. These are investments. These are long-term investments, mid-term investments. So, I mean, thank you so much, see These are the things that we can actually look at. Yeah. Like I said, look around. There are quite a lot of things that we can actually do and turn into money. I, mean, I, wanted to, I wanted to just quickly add something. This conversation is making me feel happier. You remember when, I mean, growing up, when you tell your, your mom or your dad that you want to be an artist, now, <laughs> please, if you're an artist, don't just, just lose hope because now there is an opportunity for your artwork to actually, you know, see a lot of, get and people, for people to get to see your artwork and for you to make money because now the African, the Africans are actually, you know, pushing for this and encourage your children to go into art, please. Please do. Noted. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you a lot for saying that. No, but really, I mean, it's something that we need yeah. to ask, that's, that's doing. Okay, let's, let's talk about NFTs. Mm. So I know that in Nigeria right now, we have some sort of policies and all of that against non-fungible tokens and you know things like that. So has that, has that in any way affected alternative investments, especially in arts and music? Yes, it has. Um, and also looking at the volatility of that, of that space as well. <laughs> you know, we've had instances a couple of months ago when people almost ran mad because, course, you know, people have their sort of yeah. So, and that's just some of the things that the government is also trying to um, prevent because we understand the fact that one, they can't be traced, they can't be tracked readily as you would readily do. And, and they also know the fact that. Um, many people are using it for some very weird, uh, <laughs> you know, weird um, purposes and stuff like that. So it's it's affecting the landscape really because um, it's like we like I also mentioned we are going to also study that landscape also to see how are we sure that this is here to stay. Of course, digital currencies are going to be there to stay. Digital, you know, tokens are going to be there. Could keep tokenizing items and stuff like that. Digital assets. You understand this is going to it's going to be there forever. But we also need to understand the fact that we need to protect. Uh, the sanctity of the investment landscape as of well, course. and also ensure that it's properly regulated because this anything can happen within that space, and nobody can hold anyone against it. Mm -hmm. So, um, so it's some of something that governments even around the world are still also. You know, there are some that are completely open, open, open to it, as yeah. you know, what, we open to it and go. I mean, they are either biting their fingers, as well, like you know, mm -hmm. what, we can still contract regulate it. But I think it's something we still need to study over time. I, I, as as we try not to encourage investment in that space. But I try not to also dissuade anybody from doing it. It's a function of, you know, I risk, I yield sometimes. Of right? course. So, I mean, it's it's something that's very open. Okay. All right. I, I know that this is a conversation that if we continue, there are so many parts that we can actually I agree. From yeah, I agree. This, right? The whole lot. Um, but then, I think, did you have any other questions I'm to gonna, ask? Going to art. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, it's not even that because I know I I know about how many young um, people mm. actually want to study art. They have the interest, they have the talent. Mm. However, my child has to be a doctor, my child has to be an engineer, my child has to be an accountant. But I mean now the art and music industry is actually, you know, creating an avenue for us to make money. So encourage, like it's, it's a good feel to encourage anybody to go into so that you can be a billionaire. Interesting. I mean, there are quite a number of artists today who sell seven digits. Yeah. And they're Nigerians. Yeah. And you wonder what's going on in this. You know, I went with one young chap about 27, and he was, he was telling me that if you're not willing to buy this for $100,000, please take Wait, a walk. Be confident. Oh, my. Okay. Like, I'll go and all those my daughters join. See? I'll you go see? and pick it up from Please encourage me. Please encourage me. I told you that there was a person. Okay, let's okay. ask one quick question. Okay. Um, how do you look out for? Um, individuals who are probably fraudulent because we have people who could be fraudulent and will come across to you as being a genuine article in terms of investment. So what would you advise someone to look out for so that you don't fall into something like a Ponzi scam? Okay, so you have to look at, like I mentioned earlier, you look at the pedigree of um, the establishment that they are affiliated to associated with. Um, so it might seem correct, it might seem top-notch. 
You're huh? looking at the pedigree. Okay. Yeah, so it, so it might seem, and that's why I've always said, like, there, there are a lot of things that you can actually do. I mean, check. I mean, we're, 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 unfortunately, we are lazy to do it. We don't always have time to do all of this. But like I said, look at the pedigree. It's very important. Look at, you can also check them against regulators and stuff, because some of these industries are not regulated. Right, but you need to actually be very careful and look at Precisely. them, ensure that there are regulatory bodies and because the body we approve them, it takes a lot for approval to allow such organizations to run in this country or anywhere in the climb. So regulators, regulators and the likes will also help you to mm. determine okay. how prevalent allergies they are. Thank you so much, Miwa. It was quite an insightful conversation we had and then we look forward to having more conversations like this as we go on. Thank, Thank you, you ladies so for joining Thank us you. tonight as Thank well. Thank you. Alright, before we go, do ensure you follow us on Instagram at Weisho Africa. You can interact with us further. Drop a comment and most importantly, follow all our social media engagements and remember to like, share, comment and invite your friends and family to watch us and follow us. If you missed today's quotes, here it is again. The individual investor should act consistently as an investor and not as a speculator. And this is by Ben Graham. See you tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Bye.